Hey again, this is Professor Bennett with DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example comes from Chapter 5, which covers quantization. Now, in the last programming example, we looked at the RMS level of quantization noise. In this example, we're going to explore one way of reducing the perceived level of quantization noise by making the error lower for low-level signals and allowing the error to grow for high-level signals. By virtue of the fact that all audio signals are constantly crossing zero, the quantization levels at and around zero are utilized much more frequently than the quantization levels at the extreme upper and lower ends. However, the irony of this scenario is that while for high-level signals the quantization step size is relatively minuscule, for low-level signals the quantization step size is relatively much larger. In short, low-level signals have increased relative quantization error, but are most frequently utilized. One approach to address this is to employ what's called non-uniform quantization, in which the quantization step size varies depending on the signal level. Under this scheme, the quantization step size is finer or more, more resolute at low levels and coarser at high levels compared to a linear quantizer. Therefore, instead of preserving the step size across the entire dynamic range, instead, the coarseness of the quantization step is relative to the signal level. And as a result, the RMS of the quantization error increases for high-level signals, but decreases for low-level signals and values crossing zero. Interestingly, this coincides with the functioning of the human auditory system, in which high-level sounds have a greater ability to mask noise compared to low-level signals. Now, one such non-uniform quantization is known as a mu-law algorithm. Typically, here we go, mu-law. Typically, the mu-law quantizers are used only on low bit depth systems, such as in telephony. For example, with an 8-bit converter, the constant mu is 255, uh, in, at least in the United States and Japan. But a signal that has been digitized with the MULAW quantizer must also be reconstructed with a DAC that also utilizes a MULAW expander. In the following programming example, we will quantize a flute solo to 8 bits using both linear and MULAW quantization schemes. You'll notice that while the MULAW quantized signal still sounds fuzzy, especially in the louder portions, the noise floor is noticeably lower than for the 8-bit linear quantizer. The audio for this example can be downloaded at digitalaudiotheory.com. Let's take a look. We set our MULA compression factor to 255. And we're going to read in the flute solo here. We'll read in just uh, 10 seconds of audio. Now, we're going to quantize this twice. Once, we're just going to pass it straight into our quantizer, and we're going to get our 8-bit quantized version. Next, we're going to first, uh, well, next we're going to use the MULA quantizer, and we can still use our linear quantizer if we first compress the signal, then expand the signal. So here is the algorithm for the MULA compressor. I take the sine times the log of 1 plus mu, times the absolute value of our signal over log of 1 plus mu. And then we run that through the quantizer. So we're going to save that as our 24-bit uh, mu processed signal. Then we're going to quantize it. Next, we need to take this quantized and compressed signal and expand it back out. So this algorithm here inverts uh, the compressor. So we're going to take that compressed and quantized signal, take its sine uh, times 1 over mu times 1 over mu raised to the absolute value of the level, minus 1. So now we've got our third version, our mu law uh, quantized 8-bit. So now we're going to listen to all three back to back. So this will take 30 seconds, but first we're going to hear the original 24-bit, the clean version. Then we're going to hear the um, linear quantized version. What I want you to listen for in particular 
is the uh, as the flute tails off and comes down into the noise floor, you're going to hear that quantization noise floor really kicking up. Uh, and then third, we're going to hear the Mulock quantized version. And again, listen for those tails as the flute starts to uh, come down into uh, its quieter regions. And listen for a comparison of the noise there. So here we go. So what you can hear, you can also see right here. In red, we've got the uh, the linear quantized version, and in blue is the mu quantized version. So let me expand this out. Take a look. You can see that the linear, at these low levels, the linear quantization is much coarser. And we can hear that. Let me just move it out of the way. You can see what was there underneath. Now, we, there's no free lunch. Um, the quantization levels are much coarser at the high levels, but as I mentioned, those are going to be more masked by our human auditory system. So in the next chapter, we're going to look at other ways of reducing the perceptual impact of quantization using dither. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.